So I will call the meeting to order at uh, 7 o'clock. We do have a quorum where we have two people, two members that we expect uh, will be along, hopefully shortly. And uh, we do not have a quorum um, of the folks that attended the last meeting, so we cannot do the minutes at this moment. Uh, so we'll go directly to public comment. If anyone in the audience has any comment to make on any issue at all, this is your opportunity. Seeing no hands raised, uh, we'll go on to the Catamount Town Forest Committee appointments. And we do have four candidates for two slots uh, on, the, uh, on the committee for appointment tonight. Uh, and I'd invite uh, all four candidates to come up to the, the table, grab a chair, and um, come up. Um, So welcome, and what I'd ask you to do is, uh, in order, starting here, to introduce yourselves for the camera and for us, uh, give a brief description of your background to be on the committee and uh, why you'd like to be on, on the committee. So, Thank take you. it away. <laughs> uh, my name is Pat Brown. Uh, I've lived in Lewiston for about 30 years. Um, in my, I just retired from the previous job, I worked at the university, and it's a very back to the community was nothing that I could do. So now that I'm retired and I'm repurposing my life, I like to use that term, uh, I <laughs> just popped up on Front Porch Forum and I looked at it and said I would be interested in serving the town and looking at that piece of property and how it's managed over the years. Um, I am, I guess, a semi-abutting uh, landowner. I live on North Wilson Road in, in um, the old farmhouse there near the cemetery. So my property goes over to the state property that so we can on forest. So I'm, I'm interested in sort of the long-term health of that area and trying to figure out how to best provide great stewardship, but also look at ways to use it to serve the community. Good, thank you. Hi, my name is Joanne Shaw, and um, I am a Lewiston resident. I have lived in Lewiston for about 30 years. I am running distance to um, Catamount, and um, I am uh, I'm at Catamount uh, since the town acquired it about five days a week. It's uh, an incredible gem, and um, I would like to also uh, volunteer for the town, um, sort of pay it forward. Familiar with many of the trails in the area, um, including you know Five Tree Hill and places in Essex as well, and it's just such an incredible resource. And I really kicked myself for not getting involved in the first go round of, of the, um, you know, when a committee formed to sort of help put some guidelines together. So I wasn't on the committee, but I was involved in the um, public um, input of, of the um, management. And um, I also work in healthcare, and I'm um, very aware of the, I think, not that you need to be in healthcare, but aware of the benefits, um, both physical and mental, of um, you know having access to this um, gem of a property. And I would like to, um, you know, sort of help. I think one of the things that I see when I'm up there is, other than the organized forms of using the land, I'm not seeing a lot of individuals fully, um, you know, taking advantage of that uh, area. And so, you know, a question in my mind is how do we, um, you know, promote that, um, both preserving but also accessing uh, the land and, and just taking advantage of, of such a, a resource in our community. So um, I would love to um, give back and um, do what I can to uh, preserve and encourage uh, utilization. So my name's Terry Marin, and I've only lived in Williston 20 years, so. <laughs> but I live over on Christmas Lane over near Lake Iroquois. And I was on the committee that I uh, met about a year ago, and we met, you know, just almost seemed like about a year, on trying to figure out, making recommendations for the select board. And uh, 
So got to know a bit about the catamount. Um, I had skied there previously back in the day when they, they had snow. And, um, you know, now it's great. The snow has kind of come back a little bit. Um, I would love to, you know, work with uh, Ethan Tapper, the forester, and, you know, taking care of the forest and the wildlife, um, and also work with the Catamount Outdoor Family Center to kind of keep everything running smooth, and it's a great resource for, you know, people, wildlife. Um, I would really like to see more people utilizing it. I, I know there's tons of bikers and, and runners and things, but I would just love to uh, get the general public have better, more access there. Uh, I've led bird walks there at different times of the year and uh, you know, do try to do get the public involved, maybe doing a bluebird trail or you know, chimney swift boxes. And, uh, but I just think it's a great resource to have um, and would just like to be, continue to be a part of it and see it grow. And I'm Deb Beckett. Um, and I, 30 years must be the uh, key <laughs> here, because I've been resident here for about 30 years, a little more, and, uh, and I, just, I look at this uh, as such a tremendous resource uh, for the town, for this community. Uh, the educational opportunities and recreational opportunities are just endless up there. Uh, and, you know, to, to have the opportunities for anyone to be able to go up and utilize the trails uh, at, at that catamount uh, would just be awesome. Um, I've been up there, you know, whether cross-country skiing in the past or snowshoeing or hiking or biking um, over the years. It's just, it's just, you know, such an opportunity. And um, it's one, you know, when I saw this come up, um, it was something I would just love to be involved with. Um, I'm retiring. As town clerk, as you all know, in um, uh, five months and about two minutes. <laughs> I'm not counting. It. <laughs> and um, and I just looked at this as it's just a great opportunity to stay involved with the community, to get back to the community outside of what I do now as in the uh, as clerk and treasurer. So, thank you. Before we deliberate, um, questions from the board? Yeah, I'll start. That's all right. I'm good with that, Jeff. I'm good with that. Right. So, first of all, thanks for coming and putting yourself forward. Um, I think this is a really important committee. Um, and I think you all spoke about stewardship of the land, which is, is something I think is a high priority. I just, I guess, I'd ask the same question of all of you if I could. Like, what would be like your, I guess, number one for uh, focus and paying this forward on what you would direction you would take as an individual, and then how you would work with other participants on the committee to kind of move that thinking of your own forward, but also incorporate it with everybody else's kind of pull and push system of what they see as their foresight of where this should be going. If you'd like to speak about your focus, that would be great. Um, we can we can we can go left or right or middle out, however you like to choose. All right, we'll go reverse order. Thank you. I think I would like to see a main focus, uh, aside from just to be able to utilize the trails, the wildlife uh, and wildlife education, whether it's birding or like a bird fest, a bug fest. I mean, you know, bio blitz. There is so much wildlife out there that people have no idea. Uh, what's there? Mm. Great. Thank you. So, yeah, I, I think I would really uh, enjoy kind of bridging with the <coughs> Catamount or Family Center and the, um, you know, I just finished the Master Naturalist program in Williston and, you know, just to work with different groups to bring people in and to get to know what's there. Um, yeah, the wildlife is definitely very important. You know, we're losing land all the time, so really try to work with different groups to get people out and really get to know what's, what's out there uh, in their own backyard. And um, you know, whichever groups are interested in, 
and uh, taking advantage of it. Of the camera. Thank you. And I, I think, um, you know, similarly uh, thinking about access um, and, and stewardship of the land, I know um, back in the day there was a, a program uh, through the school system that looked at environmental education and that kind of thing. And, you know, perhaps um, tying in with uh, school children, I think habits start young and um, sort of teaching the, the leave no trace and, um, you know, bringing children out there, um, perhaps connecting with uh, the library and, um, you know, having some kind of, um, you know, activity that is advertised through the library or, um, senior citizen groups as well that maybe meet here. Uh, I know they meet at the, you know, I think there's a group that meets at the Federated Church. So those kinds of things just sort of, um, sort of cast a wide net um, around the, um, the use of the, the property. All that sounds good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. That's what happens when you go last. Um, I guess for me, I'll take all of that because I think all of those things are important. I think the other part is really trying to figure out what the right balance is. You know, I guess when I think about stewardship, it's like how do we use it to not abuse it or overuse it? Yeah. And I think the educational component of it, looking at public access, uh, I don't know the property as well as maybe some other folks do who are part of the process, but are there some areas that we want to just leave as completely natural and just have it be like the Bristol Wilderness area that doesn't have any trails that people can go wander around as much as they want? So I think it's really trying to figure out what the short term, but also what the long term uh, goals would be around education, about utilization. Um, uh, but I do think some of the ideas of connecting to the schools is a really, really good idea. Thank you all, because I can hear that resonating in all of you of where your your maybe individual direction is, but how you're you're all linked with that. So. I'm, just was really impressed to hear about. Not only, I'm, a, I'm a science teacher, not in this town, but another, and I think there's just a lot of education that can be done around um, just the things that live in our backyard that kids and even adults don't know about. Um, but then also, I just like the balance and just those other pieces of that you, that you mentioned tonight. So I appreciate you all putting your hat in the ring, and it's gonna be another tough choice, as I can see. Thanks. Other questions? Well, <clears throat> sort of along the same lines, actually you stole my, my first question, <laughs> that's good. Um, I'm reading from the, um, uh, the uh, charge of the uh, Catamount Community Forest and it talks about um, things along the lines of uh, protection of wildlife habitat and water quality protection in addition to recreation. And so my question is, Given the historical use of the property, given that there's this license agreement uh, for the Catamount Family Outdoor Center to use the property, um, I think, for the next five years, and you use the word balance, and I think that's a good word, sorry if I'm stealing from you, plagiarizing from you. How do we, how do, what, is, what are your thoughts about that balance that we're gonna need to strike? And stated a little bit differently, um, it's what are we doing right with the property, maybe what are we doing wrong and that we really need to, um, need to focus on. And instead of what are we doing right, I'd really prefer that you try to focus on not what we're doing wrong, but maybe what we could improve on. Does that question make sense? And in this time, maybe we should go from, well, my left to your you can start in the middle. Yeah, I, can. <laughs> I can go first. So, um, so being on the committee for that met for the year, um, it was a great process. It was really incredible to see everyone's different, you know, ideas of what they thought that the catamount should be, and um, you know, having an existing business there was a, quite a challenge. You know, to try to incorporate. A business along with you know having just people come from all over um, for free you know to come use these trails uh, so yeah so I think the you know the Catamount Outdoor Family Center had a lot of good things in place you know they had a great trail system there were some issues they had a group from UVM come in and go through the whole area and, and pick out spots where they needed some 
you know, erosion control and maybe remove, you know, move a trail and, and everyone worked really well together. They were really open to making some of these changes. I think the town, you know, did some bridge work. And, um, yeah, I think they were open to, you know, there were a lot of issues, you know, like around the dogs and the, you know, horses and people and runners and skiers and things. But, you know, it was great to see how, you know, it did kind of all come together. Um, everybody was working to kind of make it so it would work, so everybody could enjoy it. Um, I think those are some of the really good things that came out of that process was that, uh, there was, you could see where there were going to be different uses. So there were different things that had to happen on the, the land um, as we went forward. But, uh, but yeah, I think that overall, a lot of good things are in place. And, you know, the more people get to know about it, I think it's very underused because when I ever, whenever I go up there, there's lots of bikers and there's lots of runners and things. But you don't see two, you see a few birders, you know, you see people out there walking, but I think it's kind of a, you know, hidden gem, you know, so, yeah. Um, so, I, when I think, um, I think one of the things that I would do, um, because I, I'm not sure that I'm totally aware with, of a lot of the concerns that maybe exist. I know there is some erosion. It sounds like, a, you know, I know a lot of that has been addressed, but, and in my runs on occasion, I actually hoped to run, bump into Jim, and, and I didn't once I had made this decision, but I'd love to hear from the family. What, what do you think is the biggest concern this is your, you know, property that you have owned forever. And what is your concern? You've, you've now, you know, turned it over to the town. And how can we be sure that you who knows this area most, how can you, you know, how can we help and make sure that we are on, you know, maybe the right page of, of preserving this resource? What, what are your concerns and how can we help? What do we need to, what are the priorities here? I guess that would be sort of my approach um, to um, preserving land and, and being sure that we're on task. And I, I know various um, people, experts in the field have been called in to look at the bobolinks and the deer nesting grounds and all of those things. But I might talk with, with the family and just see. <coughs> see what the priorities are. So I don't have it specific. I guess the only other thing that I would say is I am familiar with some trails in Essex that are incredibly overrun and um, certainly we don't want Catamount to become that. And you know, one of the things this particular area in Essex has done is, you know, narrow it down to um, residents and <coughs> resident, residents who need a pass, you know, are, is that where we are in 10 years from now? Who knows, but I think um, to just keep um, reassessing and, um, you know, keeping a pulse on uh, the health of the trails and, and the, the non-trails and the wildlife, et cetera. Jeff, if I were to let, I, I'd say cohabitation. Is, is a challenge, because I've been up there. Uh, I, it still feels like Catamount Family Center. You know, I suppose if I drive over around Sunset Hill, it's really clear where, where the Five Tree Hill little parking area is, and that you park there and walk up Five Tree Hill. Uh, so as I've walked up the road and gone, it just still feels like Catamount. So I think one of the challenges is, how do we make it feel so that, it's, a couple of the folks have talked about that, it always feels like it's still Catamount Family Center. So how do we make it be the Williston Forest, and how do we identify it? Uh, I was out at Mob's Farm out in Jericho this past weekend, and you know, there's a little parking area, and it was overpacked with cars because it's a really cool place to walk around. So you know, it's a part of it to work. So how do we do that in the interim? And whether the five-year agreement continues for another five years, I don't know. But I think in the short run, part of it is how do we make it so that folks who want to go there and not and just walk around feel comfortable doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. It's all right. No, that's all right. And I uh, think, you know, as everyone here does, I think communication uh, between 
the Catamount Family Center and uh, this committee uh, is absolutely imperative over you know having a good solid working relationship over the next five years and beyond if it goes that uh, goes that far but um, but it, it definitely takes it's going to take the communication uh, going forward and also I think it's it's would be important in that communication that just with catamount uh, as a business there but it's also you know would be important whether it's uh, to have the communication with <clears throat> different departments within the town whether it's the stormwater as far as uh, stormwater mitigation type of uh, things whether it's recreation departments I mean everybody's got to really work together uh, to make this a success Further questions? If there's no further questions, then the deliberation can start here with the board. We have two openings on for a two-year term, two-year term, I believe, and um, so the floor is open. Well, I'll, I'll state the obvious, which I think we're all feeling. Lately, we seem to be in this good place where we're getting <laughs> more good qualified applicants for positions, and it puts us in a very awkward position because we end up having to say no to somebody who <clears throat> we would have, I believe, we would have no problem appointing. In fact, we'd like to appoint. Um, we just can't. <laughs> So with that opening statement. <laughs> <laughs> you can already see me squirming in my chair because you're, yes. you're, we could have all of you, I would say yes right away, but that's not the case. And I don't want anybody to be discouraged on reapplying at a later date to another post if you're not selected this evening. So I wanted to get that out there as well. Um, this is a rich pool again, as Jeff has stated. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to. I don't know how to. I don't know how to do this, and I don't know why I'm the one starting. But so be it. Um, Thank I, you. I thought Patrick gave a very good answer uh, to my question, and and for some reason, Patrick, I just I have a feeling that the skills you would bring to um, this position are, are 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 exactly what we're looking for. The perspective, the skills, the open, the balance, the open-mindedness, the balance, um, and then um, the other person I've known Joanne for many years and have the utmost respect for her <coughs> uh, and her family. Um, so it'd be awfully hard for me, because I know Joanne, to think of somebody who's um, who's going to who's going to work hard and look at the issues and and come to her own decision whether or not it's it's the um the decision of the group you'll speak your mind and i think that's i know that about joanne and i know that's important other comments the other two candidates gave excellent answers yes, yes. <clears throat> Particularly difficult. First of all, I came in late. I apologize <coughs> to uh, all of you. Um, but in the same regard, uh, uh, boy, uh, I, I kind of long for the days when nobody wanted to serve and we could just appoint one person. Um, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I know. It was, it was easy. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, it's like voting in the Soviet Union. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, that being said, uh, I, I thought all of you did. Great answers. Um, Teresa, I particularly enjoyed your answer that Catamount is underused. Um, I thought that was a uh, well, uh, it was a, an insight. Um, and Patrick, I think the same thing with your uh, comment that the, um, uh, that it's kind of a hidden, uh, hidden gem right now. Uh, well, I don't know if that's the term you used, but uh, the idea, so. I think somebody else did too, yeah, actually. Uh, anyway, but that, um, that it's, uh, anyway, so. Um, so we have, to make a, we have to make a motion. Somebody does anyway. You know what I think we should do? We should get a dartboard. <laughs> <laughs> because it would, quite honestly, we would, well, no. 
Yeah. Sorry, I won't go Maybe that. <laughs> I would make a motion if the chair would entertain it. Yes. Um, I move to appoint uh, Patrick Brown to the Catamount Community Forest Community for a three year term through June 30, 2022. Is there a second? <clears throat> I will second that one. Is there a discussion on the motion? No, I think. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? So we filled the three-year term, and we're looking for to fill the two-year term. Um, that we appoint Joanne Shaw to the Catamount Community Forest for a two-year term through June 30th, 2021. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is <clears throat> your discussion on the motion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? So congratulations to the two of you who have been selected, and uh, we um, look forward to the other two uh, serving in a different capacity, perhaps, or when vacancies occur. So thank you all for... Yeah, thank you all for your time. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you very much. So we're at the point for uh, to look at the management plan for the former Pine Ridge School property. Linda, I think, is here. Yes, <laughs> Linda Scott from um, our conservation planner is here to give us a um, brief description of what is in this large document. Okay. Uh, so this management plan is for a. 42 acre parcel of open space that the town acquired in 2016. Um, this parcel was deeded to the town um, by Nets New England Theological Seminary as a condition of approval for their uh, redevelopment of the former Pine Ridge School. Um, so the parcel is located off of Governor Chittenden Road um, near the intersection of Route 2. Um, it abuts the UVM owned. Talcott Forest to the west, um, the Nets property to the south, and uh, the uh, River Hill Farm to the north. Um, parcels uh, primarily wooded, and it's got some steep topography. Uh, it's also within a designated deer wintering area. Um, fall of 2018, the town uh, had a group of students from the University of Vermont uh, Rubenstein program um, do a, a resource assessment of the property. Um, about, I think it was a group of five students went and inventoried the, um, the uh, natural communities, uh, inventoried invasives, uh, did an inventory of the trails and also looked at uh, potential access to the property um, and also uh, took, took a, an assessment of the existing cabin on the property. Um, so uh, staff worked with the Williston Conservation Commission to take these inventories and uh, compile them into a cohesive management plan and that's what we've brought for you to consider. Um, the draft plan has been posted on the town website for uh, a couple of months um, and uh, also on the town Facebook page. Uh, there's Williston Conservation <coughs> Commission has discussed the plan um, during four regular meetings um, and uh, approved the plan um, on August 7th, 2019. Um, only one Williston resident submitted feedback uh, for the plan, um, basically stating that they hoped it would be remain as pristine as possible, the, the property that is. <clears throat> uh, the draft plan was also shared with the director of public works and his feedback incorporated. Um, 
One thing I want to note is this property, unlike some of our other conservation properties, is not under a conservation easement. Um, so there's no requirement to have a management plan, but since there has been some interest in this property that's um, been expressed to me, um, I thought it was important to at least um, you know, uh, develop a plan for, man for future management. So in the plan, um, there are noted three different options um, of what we could do with the, uh, uh, what we might do with the, the, the property to begin with and then uh, as we go forward with that. Maybe you want to describe those for us. Sure. Um, I think what you're referring to is, uh, in particular, forest management. Yeah. Um, so the three different options um, that were given were basically a hands-off approach, which um, typically has been um, the Conservation Commission's recommendation on, on other town conservation areas. Uh, there's also the approach of um, uh, doing some uh, limited timber uh, management or forest management to um, with the goal of improving habitat. Um, and th then the third option given was to do uh, sort of all out commercial tree harvesting on the property. Um, at this time, the Conservation Commission is recommending pretty much a hands off approach, um, just leaving, um, letting the forest regenerate and um, uh, kind of go. Uh, go through natural, uh, its own natural evolution. Um, and w with one um, uh, point being that if Talcott, uh, if UVM should ever engage in active forest management of the abutting Talcott forest, I think the Conservation Commission would be interested in a collaboration with them and um, to, to manage do some forest management in the Pine Ridge Forest as well. Good, thank you. Um, questions from the board regarding the uh, the plan? So, um, anyway, that. Um, the town obtained it or uh, obtained the land in 2016. Is this the first management plan that's been developed for it? Okay, yes. that, that doesn't mean it's a criticism or anything. I just wasn't sure. Okay, um, I was a little, I mean, not pleasantly or not unpleasantly, surprised to hear about the, um, the cabin. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Um, what, what was it, do we know what it's, who built it, what its intended use was? <laughs> yeah, so um, the cabin um, was used by the former Pine Ridge School uh, I believe that it was constructed, um, I think in the, I want to say in the, maybe the 60s or the 70s. Um, that's not really known when it was constructed, but uh, it's certainly not any older than, than that, you know, probably sometime during the 60s or 70s um, for the purpose of education. And uh, interestingly, it, the inside of the cabin is it's it's as if it's exactly the way it, it was you know when the Pine Ridge School um, kind of disbanded. Um, there's still little notes on the counter. Um, looks looks like part of a lesson. Okay. <laughs> and, um, so it, it it obviously was used for an educational <clears throat> purpose. Um, and uh, I mean it's in generally good shape. Um, it does need to be cleaned out a bit. Um, but it could, going forward, you know, I think there's a decision to be made by the town of how to use this, whether to just lock it up and, you know, not have any access to it or to um, potentially um, rent it out to school groups who might want to use it for educational purposes. Okay. Okay, good. I'm on page 47, and, it, and, and it's talking about um, how a connector trail might be put in place so that folks can actually access the trails that are on this parcel. And I, I was 
I was confused because the sentence read, the most viable connection appears to be along a path through the uh, River Hill Farm property shown above. But if I look at the map correctly, and, and maybe my orientation is wrong, it looks like the access would actually be through the UVM property. Um, Am I? I think the the trail that you see is kind of a general um, yeah. line. I don't think it's accurately depicts an actual connection. Okay. Um, there are, um, you know, I don't. Uh, there could be a connection through Talcott, um, but the topography is pretty challenging. Um, okay. I think what the UVM students concluded was that the easiest connection, at least um, uh, in terms of physically developing a trail, would be through um, the abutting land. Meaning the river, yeah. river, I always get this wrong, River Hill Farm. Mm -hmm. Do we have any, uh, any information about how willing either property owner would be to allow a trail? I think um, I think UVM would probably welcome uh, some kind of a connection. Um, I think they'd be okay with it. Uh, I don't know. Um, there, the town does have, um, or at least tried to obtain an easement, um, you know, previously. Um, so, it's possible, but it would okay. involve some negotiation. We'd have to find out. Okay, I'm on page 49, and it talks about recreational use potential. And in the first paragraph, it gives some I, um, uh, some suggestions, hikers, bikers, and potentially skiers. <clears throat> and given that River Hill Farm is an abutting landowner with horses, is there any consideration of horses? Um, it was not discussed, um, but uh, it certainly could be considered. Okay, okay, all right, good, thank you. And then in the next paragraph, it, it makes the recommendation that it be limited to pedestrian only. And I just wanna make sure I understood what pedestrian means. For some people, it means bikes, and some, for, in some people's mind, no, it's just walkers, hikers. Yeah. So I just want to be, you know, if you know what the intent was here. Yeah, so it, it was uh, uh, intended to be off limit, or pedestrian only, meaning no bikes. No bikes, so yeah. walkers and hikers only. Yeah. Okay. Okay, those are my questions. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? <clears throat> a motion would be in order to um, adopt the plan. The plan. Move to adopt the management plan for the former Pine Ridge School property. Is there a second? <clears throat> I'll second. <laughs> I just want to make sure we're, we're all comfortable with that concept of the um, hands-off sort of approach and figure it out kind of, I read this as figure it out as we go you know what needs to be done uh, just do the immediate things right now which i think is really focused on maybe even just a cabin you know figuring that out and then down the road figuring out pedestrian trails yeah uh, um, uh, harvesting or, or forest management okay i believe the select board pretty much at any time uh, can choose to do another option other than option one at this point Right, but you know this hopefully will be in place for. Sure. You know, I mean, whatever. Right, we could suddenly say nope on active, <laughs> you know, active harvesting. Yes. Um, okay. Any further discussion? <clears throat> if not, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much, Melinda. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can yes. we um, revisit the uh, appointments? Uh, did we skip over or did I miss the... Um, did I miss oh, the I beg your pardon. You're right. We had two uh, <clears throat> that were re oh. requested from um, the, was it, the Conservation Commission, and um, you're right. <laughs> select board. <clears throat> yes, select board. Yes, right. <clears throat> so one from the Conservation Commission, one from the Recreation Committee. And one from the select board. I think that uh, Joy has already uh, volunteered to do that. But we do need to um, step back and 
make the motions for the other two that have been recommended to us from those two committees. I move to appoint Joy Limoges to represent the select board on the Catamount Community Forest Committee. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Is there any discussion on that? Just that that's what she gets for missing a meeting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't think so, but. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the next motion. Uh, move to appoint Laura Mayer to represent the Conservation Commission on the Catamount Community Forest Committee. Is there a second? I'll second that one. Uh, is there a discussion on the motion? Just a question. I assume nobody else from the Conservation Commission is interested, or they went through a process in which she was selected. Okay. Yes. I just mm -hmm. would hate to hear about afterwards. Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> and the last motion? Move to appoint Danielle Doucette to represent the Recreation Committee on the Catamount Community Forest Committee. Is there a second? <clears throat> I'll second. <clears throat> Is there any discussion on the motion? Same question about uh, the process. Okay. <clears throat> and these would coincide with their terms on these. Oh, okay. Boards right. Yeah. Okay, good. Right. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> so I think we have taken care of all of the issues regarding the uh, town forest. So moving on then to the noise control ordinance amendment. And we do have uh, the amendment is proposed as uh, was requested by the select board about a month ago. and. We have some information that has come from the, the gun club and their attorney uh, with a compromise to the um, proposal of the select board. So, um, Bob, Adi, would you like to speak on behalf of the, uh, the gun club regarding the compromise? Sure. Um, so, we, uh, all the way up <laughs> <laughs> um, so hello again um, so we reviewed the proposal um, that staff drafted um, following the select board's suggestions at the July 23rd meeting um, and made only what we believe are a couple of hopefully you'll find the minor changes um, the first being to change the wording uh, around when special events can occur to make uh, weekday special events permissible. Um, we talked a little bit about this at the, at the last meeting, although the discussion was more around numbers, and I'll get to that in a minute. But, um, but uh, you know, with the town's consensus or apparent consensus around calendar year 2006 being the time period that um, we should be looking at for guidance on how to move forward, um, and the weekday special events that occurred in 2006, we thought it was appropriate to add that back in. Um, further there, not so much from the legal argument, so to speak, on that, but the common sense argument, if you will, um, and this was included in the, in the letter there, um, you know, the, the presumption that weekday special events, while there are certainly people who are retired, may work off schedules, things like that, with probably the preponderance of people in the in the community being Monday through Friday, nine to fivers, um, that those weekday special events may be less impactful to the community than uh, the Saturday events that we would have been limited to under the town's wording. Um, the other change uh, that we're suggesting is around the um, wording of how the total number of special events is, is tabulated. Um, what I didn't do a very good job of articulating at the last meeting when we were having the discussion around numbers and um, I think I made the comment uh, something like, you know, there's never been a number, uh, so to speak. And, and what I was really getting at there is the fluctuation, the level of activity that's happened at the club pretty much throughout our history. We, we looked at four years of data that we had presented following the uh, court ruling. I know staff had presented data from other time periods um, and things like that. And, and I don't know that there are any two years within that where the, the number of special events held at the club are, are the same. Um, and so looking for a way to reflect that, 
Um, we didn't add any special events, as, as, as you likely saw, um, but are suggesting that the number of 16 special events be based on an average within a defined period, um, as opposed to a calendar year um, count. Um, and there, you know, in theory, what that allows us to do is if we have a, a year where we host 12 special events and the following year we get that 17th request, um, you know, we, we don't have to say no to that 17th request and we come out to an average somewhere in between and, and, um, and, and would give us that, the flexibility to do that. So um, those are the two main changes that we suggested to what was proposed by the select board. Uh, last time, again, uh, like I say, I would just point out that neither, neither of those suggestions adds a, a single special event or day of shooting to what the town proposed. Um, it just allows them to be uh, distributed a little bit differently. And like I say, I think there are arguments to be made in a possibly less impactful way in, in the case of um, some of those events should we, should we continue to host the occasional event on a weekday. So are there questions from the board for Bob? <clears throat> if, Bob, if there was a weekday special event in the, in the summer, it would go until dusk? I left, I believe we left the nine to four uh, hours in there for the special events. Oh, okay. All right. Do you remember, Bob, or do you know in the past that historical period we looked at to find out what the past practices were? Were special events or events held on weekdays in addition to Saturdays, or do you know? Yeah, and that and that was what we based that on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there were there were some in yeah. 2006. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then this is a question. I'm sorry, I was not at the meeting where this was discussed. Okay. Um, has the select board come to a decision that the 16 special events and then four um, hunter safety courses are the the number it feels, for lack of better words, comfortable with. That was what the board recommended the staff draft uh, okay. for us, yes. Okay. I mean, just personally, I feel the 16 plus 4 feels like too many, but I think I'm in the minority on this. Further questions from the board? Um, Bob, the only question I have about the... I. I I think the rolling idea is, is fine, it's good. Um, I, I like that it provides a little bit of flexibility, but yet puts you know, limits, for lack of better words, on. The only question I have is, you could see a situation where the, if the rolling is interpreted to mean you can do 16 times two plus four times two in one year and zero the next. Do, is there, should we put any limits on how much roll, I don't know how to express this. <laughs> so a ceiling? A ceiling? A top oh, Right. You know, would that make sense? Well, we've already got the limit in there. We left in the limit of the three. Uh, and actually, to be fair, so this is one other small change that, that I made that, as well. That actually is, that is a, I see your point. The, so. the, the, we, we've got the limit of the three events in there. Um, now, I did just want to clarify so it's not to obscure anything. I did change the wording around that a little bit. Um, with the uh, limit on three now moving to three Saturdays um, a month. That would have been implied before because only Saturday events were permitted. Um, again, the thinking there that, you know, if, if we presume that weekday special events are less impactful, <clears throat> excuse me, impactful with um, a, a large subset of folks being at work, that uh, th those Saturday ones would be the ones that would, if, if done on a more regular basis, would draw the most um, attention, shall we say. Um, Rick, is the gun club proposal on <clears throat> Dropbox? I didn't see it. Here. Mm -hmm. I a hard copy. <laughs> you have an actual do have a, a good old-fashioned piece yes. of paper. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Paper. <laughs> <clears throat> I think initially it was excluded, but it's on the website. Thank you. <clears throat> you 
a minute so I have to read that over. Well, Ted's reading that over. Maybe I'll ask or point out something. Um, again, I might be in the minority on this. Is the, and I'm just going to focus on the, the the proposal that was the town put together before you countered with or not countered came back with this other proposal and it talked about no more than three special events would occur on Saturdays. But then if you add in the gun safety courses, I guess my question is, does that mean that for four months in a row there could be an event, whether it be a special event or a hunter safety course happening every weekend? And I just want to make sure I understand. Sorry, ask that one more time. Sure, sorry. Four. <laughs> So there's, um, uh, the proposal is 16 special events, but only three can occur in a month. Okay. And, and they could only occur on Saturdays because that's the way the language originally read. But then there, in addition to that, there can be four hunter safety courses. So on that, assuming a month has four Saturdays, I know some actually don't, um, but assuming a month has four Saturdays, does that mean that there could be four months in a row in which there'd be three special events on Saturday and then a gun safety course on the fourth Saturday, meaning there would be something happening for a total of four months every Saturday? And I just um, want to make sure I understand this. Yeah, so, so I know that we had talked about the hunter education events not counting against the total, the, the right. total and, number of special events. And that I get I don't it. know that we went into the detail of whether those would count against the three per month. Uh, but what I would say is that I think that um, just functionally that would be somewhat unlikely for the following reason. The hunter education events um, tend to be held during times of the year. Um, when we're not as busy with um, our own special events or other special events, um, so to speak. So, like I say, I think, I think operationally that would be unlikely. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and please don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, in, in, in theory, we'd have to discuss yeah. it. Like I said, I, yeah. I, I don't okay. recall that yeah. level of detail yeah. being discussed about whether those yeah. would count as part of the, the three per yeah. month. Yeah. I'm, I'm very much in favor of the gun hunt hunter safety courses or hunter, the hunter safety courses. I think that's a very positive thing, but I just wonder if it does mean, what is the impact on the neighbors? Yeah, the other thing that was discussed, and I don't want to speak for the board, but I think the reason that there was some willingness to kind of pull those out and look at those separately, um, Art, who, who runs those uh, at the club, is, is here this evening, um, and certainly correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the things that we discussed around those is those are a very low volume shooting um okay. you know we're they're usually moving through six to twelve i mean shooters often um and it, it's mostly a matter of displaying good gun handling it's not you know how many do you break out of a hundred i mean i think you know the people who are there may shoot five or ten shells um you know in, in any given event so um you know I, Again, I don't want to speak from the for the board, but I think that was one of the reasons we you know, okay. agreed to pull this out. So. Any further questions at this time from the board? How does a rolling average actually work? <clears throat> like, if I year well, I one, the other, the other way to look at that would be that we could hold forty-eight in three years. In a, in a thirty-six month period. So a new month comes along, you host what you host or you don't, and then the 35th, 36th month behind you falls off. Or it's like so I'd open it up to members of the audience who wish to make any comments uh, regarding the proposals, uh, either the towns or the, uh, the gun clubs. Uh, if you do, uh, please identify yourself and uh, Keep your comments down to two minutes if possible, and then I'll recognize people as they um, raise their hands. Yes, sir. May I have a statement? I'd like to be, sure. I'll try to keep it under two minutes. Yes, yeah, sure. Can, maybe. Sure, come on up to the microphone. Good evening, folks. My name is John Vibber. Uh, I'm a member of the club. I've been on the board of the club, and I'm happy to hear that the, the club and you are pretty close together. So please take what I'm saying in that spirit. Your um, situation at the moment is 
we have a historic footprint of operation, how we operated before May 22nd, 2006, some span of time. And you folks, that's kind of the historical footprint, and you folks have not to step on that footprint as you make your, your noise ordinance. And when that happens, <clears throat> the war is over. I mean, we're, we're being aligned with each other, and that would be a really good thing. But I have some, some comments along the way. The, the key uh, statement in, the, in the, the Supreme Court judgment was the level of discharge at the club on the effective date of the statute, it's important, establishes the baseline existing use against which municipal regulations are measured. So <clears throat> accordingly, references in this opinion to historic levels of shooting at the club refer to those levels established as of May 22nd, 2006. So we're talking about the time period before. <clears throat> in your original proposal, you have January 1st, 2005, and I think this is an era, the court statement is very clear that it's uh, 2006, May 22nd, and to use the January 1st one is to lob off 17 months of the historic period, and I don't think that's what you meant to do. Our um, attorney was concerned that using that date may be that you were trying to look at a smaller period of time um, to make a judgment about fewer special events or something like that. I, I would just like to remind you that uh, this would contradict the board's negotiating position over the years. Uh, you uh, had Rick McGuire count the number of uh, <clears throat> special events from 2007 to 2015, May of each year, and so you've got eight years, an eight-year span when you kept track of us, and you were dealing with um, the number of events per year, so we've got a metric there, and you've got averages of the number of events per year. So you already used an eight-year eight period, um, and so it's not too unlikely that we're gonna, we ask for maybe three or four years before 2006, and I think that 16 number probably comes pretty darn close. So I'm <clears throat> thanking you for taking that position. My second position, my second suggestion is, is echoing Bob here, um, that some of the 16 events uh, should occur on weekdays. And here's what the Supreme Court said about the, the statute concerning gun ranges, the 2006 statute. This statute unquestionably limits the town's authority to reduce the permissible use or discharge of firearms at the club below the levels in effect on May 22nd, 2006. So the, the club has documented that weekday special events occurred in the years before this date. They were not prohibited at that time, therefore, in the words of this court, in the court, they were permissible. The, the court judgment references the, to the uh, makes references to the historical level of discharge in several ways, including what I said before, the historical footprint. We, our evidence clearly shows that weekday special events held within our normal shooting hours are part of our historical footprint. Okay, in summary, I urge you to stay with the 16 special events and I urge you to accept a few of these events shifted to a weekday when you know fewer folks will be at home. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to make any comments uh, regarding the issue? Uh, I just make one. Yes, sure. The, uh, just for point of clarification, the January 5th, 2005 date was part of the original ordinance, and that was chosen because that was the date the ordinance went into effect. January 1, 2005. Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> So the question is, uh, do we want to schedule a public hearing regarding the um, proposal for amendment? And if we do, uh, which one do we wish to, uh, to, to warn? I don't think we're ready for a hearing yet because I want to see if we can't work gun club's proposal into our ordinance. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. 
I don't know if that's going to be successful or not, but I would like to get input from staff and uh, the town's attorney and see uh, if that's if that's possible. Um, mm, there's no there's no hurry to do this. Uh, certainly, as far as calling for a public hearing, it's good to get it right um, before we actually do that. So a motion to table it certainly would be in order. Well, before before that's made, though, I did the. Um, the special events on during the week that would be until 4 p.m. Um, that that's intriguing. Um, I guess I, I think that might be a uh, that might be a good idea. Um, but uh, that's what I that's what I think. Hi. <clears throat> that sounds good to me. The only thing I will add is. Terry, I know you didn't mean it in this, this manner, but you said there's no rush, and I cannot wait for this to get behind us. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Do we get to second things? Yeah. <laughs> I could yeah. second that. <laughs> yeah, but let's, I agree. let's see what we can do. Yeah. But it's important to get it right. So. You're absolutely correct. Thank you. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's, let's keep this on the agenda and move it as quickly as we can, but I would like more input. So I would move to table. Do I hear a second to table? A second. <clears throat> it's a non-debatable issue. So uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? So we'll continue our discussions on this. But uh, thank you very much for your input and uh, yep. all of you for coming out tonight. Thank you. Thank you. If, you, if uh, any of you have not signed in, be signed in before you leave, please. So moving on then to the charter change proposal, and that's Eric. So last meeting in the August, the board directed staff to receive the charter change proposal. That encompasses changes related um, to require binding arbitration for public safety <coughs> contracting passes and currently ambiguous language related to the hiring authority for the library director. Um, tonight, the memo before you prepared that draft language for consideration. And during that time, we'd also like to bring to the board's consideration another policy point um, to think about as we go through this charter amendment process. So, in, and it's related to self governance issues in the state. Vermont as a Dillon's rule state allows municipalities to only exercise powers specifically granted to them or necessarily in a, and essential to their purposes. Um, the role of the town charter or any municipal charter is to enable the municipality to deviate from general statute in specific instances when after adoption by the voters and approved by the legislature I have to go through that multiple step process. So this past um, legislative session, the Senate passed a bill that would establish a pilot pro program to authorize a limited number of cities and towns to engage in self-governance um, within some strictly defined parameters. This would involve a proposal for local changes approved by voters that would then go to a new commission formed for approval rather than the legislature. Um, this was approved by the Senate, but the House government operations did not take up the bill or its companion bill in the House, um, the first half of the biennium, so that, that's on the wall um, still there. So the policy question for the board to think about is we're looking at this charter change. It's so whether it's supportive of increased self-governance at the local level, and if so, where would that begin? Uh, one approach Rick and I have prepared uh, with the draft, some red line language in this memo, is modifying the charter to enable the town by Australian ballot to amend the charter to allow any measure that is granted to another municipal charter in the state with voter approval. So that concept is, if one municipality is allowed to do something by virtue of its charter, um, other municipalities should be able to opt in for the same and not be subject to legislative, legislative review of it. So we've put that draft language in there. I um, consulted with Paul Gillis, uh, attorney Montpelier, who's helped the town throughout the years for its town charter. Um, Paul was supportive of placing this to, to the voters along with the um, um, binding arbitration question that the board discussed previously. I ran that by him as well. Um, he, he didn't note that he foresaw it passing some legal hurdles. Uh, he referenced Chapter 2, Section 6 tests, he called it, of the Vermont Constitution 
that grants the legislature authority to create municipalities. Um, we bring this to the board because other towns are likely uh, to consider language like this. Um, the LCT has been a strong advocate for this to the legislature. Um, it's along the same lines of the binding arbitration issue. If multiple towns take this to the voters, the people support this, um, it does send a message to the legislature um, for, for that public input piece. So I leave that policy issue to the board if it would like to discuss further and think about this in the charter amendment proposal. <coughs> It'll be interesting that if we should put these forward and the voters approve them to see what the legislature actually does with the language, at least regarding the, the first one where uh, it allows the, the town to do something that other towns have done. There was a bill, I think, in the legislature in the last session, maybe it's probably still there hanging on the wall, that would say that the legislature would not necessarily uh, be, be required to act on something that's sort of cut and dried type of thing and be interesting to hear the discussions. <laughs> has has this language shown up in any other town charter that you're, or town charter proposal that you're aware of? Uh, not to this point. Um, some towns are talking about this right now, so we okay. were Wanted to get it to your attention now as you're looking at yeah. the charter amendment. Um, nothing specifically at this time, but it's yeah. the season for, for Yeah, I mean, I, I support the concept. Uh, I don't know how viable it is <laughs> from the legislature's <laughs> perspective. Um, right. Um, so I, I, if you're asking, should we be a guinea pig to move this forward? I say, sure. So just by way of example, if, if uh, and actually this was a big deal 20 years ago, is a local options tax was a new, <laughs> new idea. Yes. Um, under the, this, under this uh, law, if the legislature grants one municipality the right to do a local options tax, then any municipality can do it. Well... I mean, our charter would be only Williston could do it. Right, but I mean, the, yeah. Right, but but the net effect is, yes, and other towns could, if they adopted that same type of provision, would be able to take advantage of a law that was um, geared initially towards one community. So interesting um, um, per, um, point you brought up, because wasn't that sort of the concept of the local options tax? At first, it was only for certain communities that were impacted by yes, Act 60. Yeah. But isn't it available to any community now? I believe it is now. Um, okay. Yeah, at Williston, initially, they, the state legislature had created a law that had a formula. And it was intended, I believe, to uh, allow Williston to become a community if it so chose to um, adopt the local option tax. Right, I remember. But when the a formula was applied, Williston fell just below <laughs> the limit oh. they set. <laughs> and so we had to go back um, to the legislature later on with a charter change. I think it was a charter, yeah, it was a charter change that allowed us to become uh, eligible for the local option tax. Okay. It's probably, it's not terribly relevant to the but to what's at hand tonight, but as I recall, when I first got on the select board, the local options tax was scheduled to sunset, wasn't it? Yes, that's correct. Oh, oh interesting. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I was really worried that yeah. it was going to blow a huge hole in our budget. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> and actually, the, time, the first time the town voted on it, it was overwhelmingly defeated. Yes, it was. <laughs> the second time it got voted on it, it was overwhelmingly approved. Yeah. That, that so. first meeting you referred to was the ugliest. <laughs> <laughs> town meeting I've ever been to. <laughs> yeah, it was up near the top of, or the bottom, I would say. Yes. Yeah, bottom is a good word for it. <laughs> so the interesting thing about this is, boy, would it cause legislature to look at any <laughs> charter yeah, revision that's, so carefully. That's actually what I'm a little worried about. Yeah. Um, and, and, and might reduce their willingness to approve charter changes because of that unknown. Who else is going to come and ask for this? I'm not saying that should influence our decision, right. but I can just see. Yes. It'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting conversation in yeah. government ops. Yes. 
I know um, last session, I think City of South Burlington passed an additional, maybe it was half a percent tax on rental cars. Yeah, that's the right. The legislature didn't approve that that's change, right. even yeah. though the voters of the city supported it. The legislature didn't accept that change. Right. Mm -hmm. It's trying to be a relevant example of yeah. some of the self home rule versus still under school. <laughs> so, Rick, I think you said you would like to uh, postpone this, any action on this tonight? Or? Yeah, I would, but I, I wanted yeah. the board's input. But absolutely this, true. Um, right. What I'd like to do is, uh, at our next meeting, uh, bring back to you a proposal that you can vote on for the schedule of public hearing. Right. Now, yeah. after the public hearing, you have an opportunity to make additional changes. And the second public hearing could be as late as sometime in January. So we have some time sure. here. But uh, the, there isn't a lot of time, so we, that's why we're trying to get the first public hearing scheduled. Right, right. So any other input on the uh, proposals tonight? I'm good. Okay. Like, before we go on, the, yeah. I'm, I'm curious about the law of unintended consequences, though. I mean, if we, if, if the, Big, the big proposal were, were passed and then the legislature went ahead and did it. I can see really, I, I'm just imagining there would be like if, like South Burlington has major issues with the airport. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, other towns would have major issues with correctional centers. Maybe some town will have an issue with uh, recreational marijuana shops or something yes. like that. Hmm. And I'm just, it'd be really kind of odd that if, you know, suddenly Williston is allowed to place a correctional center in a certain place when that's really more an issue for Swanton or, you know, <laughs> Rutland or someplace like that. And I, um, or, you know, that we, we get to, we get to tax an airport if one ever moved to Williston. I mean, it'd be, it'd be kind of a strange, uh, strange <clears throat> but I, I don't know that it'd be necessarily for us to worry about. Usually, uh, thinking about correctional facilities, usually for citing those, the town makes out extremely well because they're not going to accept it unless the legislature builds a road or a sewer treatment plant or both or whatever. So the legislature has spent a lot of money mm -hmm. in towns for yeah. those kind of things. We used to have a chance, we had a parcel at Maple Tree Place at one point and we weren't allowed to put a police station there. <laughs> um, we you still have that parcel. Ah, well, we yes. We could put another it. Another whole story, which I'll have to bring to you. Later. <laughs> so, so you, you, Ted, you do raise a very interesting point. I don't know where, where, I don't know where it's going, but it's it's one thing when you might want to uh, um, prohibit or regulate a government entity from doing something, but what about private entities? You mentioned the, the marijuana dispensaries. Uh, then I think it gets a little sticky. <clears throat> You know, or, or what about something like solid waste facilities, which right now have some um, protection under state law, and we were to remove those protections, for instance, um, or a town, you know, was choosing to remove those protections. Of course, if a town, another town was doing that and was granted the right, then why, and, and Williston decided it wanted that's right too, then why would, shouldn't we get that right? I, I don't have a good answer, yes or no. Um, on the one hand, you sit and say, you know, it, it should be available to all, like the local options tax. That should probably be available to all. I could see where an argument is made. It should be available to all municipalities. There are other things where I'm not so sure. Um, for instance, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to focus on solid waste, I don't, but it's maybe something I, I know a little bit about is Something that would, in Coventry's place, make sense because they house the right now the only uh, landfill in the state would be very different than Williston, which is potentially looking at being a host community for a landfill. I mean, I could just see where there's, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't have a. I, that's a good legal question. <laughs> Indeed. So I think we'll move along to the but good, yeah. purchasing policy update. So, just a, just a go comment. Ahead. Go ahead. Is in general, I mean, out of all the things we do, charter changes are probably about in the middle of, you know, kind of my high-low interest. 
Yeah, it's just raised it up a bit. <laughs> you know, these are some interesting concepts. Yes, there are. Yeah. Purchasing policy update, and you have a new copy of the high, highlighted um, with the changes that were recommended by the board at its last meeting. Eric? I'll go through <clears throat> specific changes. So on page four, um, section now 7.4, um, some language added after section 10, or determined to be sole source as defined in section 11, the request for a waiver of, of competitive bidding form must be completed and sent to the town manager for approval. So that was one change as of the result a couple of meetings ago. Uh, next is on, numbers are a little different here. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it said page 505 after page 4 of 5 and 6 of 5, but anyway, next page, 5 of 5. Um, <laughs> section 11 is has been reworded the sole source purchases um, beginning um, sentence and a half has been struck and um, added in language for uh, being approved by the town manager following a good faith review of available sources and a determination. determination there's only one qualified source for the required um, supply service or construction. And then um, added at the end, the bid waiver form would be completed and submitted to the town manager for review. And then going on to the next page, um, so change from, we have the, the select board awarding contracts to make these um, emergency purchases this is section 13 now, and we've changed it to the town manager and provide the select board is notified as soon as practical of these emergency purchases. And those were the changes surely, surely managers of the discussion. And I reviewed my comments from last week and how they were addressed and I'm good. Good, so uh, if there's no questions for Eric on this, the motion is in order. Okay, hang on a sec. I'll move to amend the town's purchasing policy as presented. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion on the motion? Good job. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, let's go back to the minutes then. We do now have. Um, Three people here that uh, were in attendance at the last meeting, and I'd be looking for a motion to approve the minutes of August 20th, 2019. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Page Page two. Hearing no corrections, uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes of August 20, 2019 say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And what abstention, that's me. So we'll move on then to the manager's report. <clears throat> I don't have too much to add to my written report here. Um, I guess only um, two items I want to touch upon is first, local options tax receipts. We got that a short sure. while ago. Terrific. And our um, report came after the last select board meeting. So I did provide you a copy as soon as it came out but officially it's included in this agenda packet and it shows that we exceeded our budget by um, close to $400,000 for the fiscal year. So that's pretty significant. And then uh, just an update on the library director recruitment process. <clears throat> we have narrowed the field down to two candidates. The finalists are scheduled for an interview on September 16th. It's going to be a multifaceted interview. In other words, there'll be a panel um, of um, library patrons and one select board member, which is Terry McKay. He's volunteered for that. Thank you, Terry. And I, there's a, um, 
that'll be moderated by myself, and we've also will also be giving the candidates a written assignment that they'll have to present at that particular interview. There'll be a less formal interview with um, the staff of the library where each candidate will get a tour and the staff will get a chance to ask questions and the candidates will get the chance to ask questions of the staff. And then that will be followed by a formal interview by the Library Board of Trustees. By the way, the um, informal interview will be, uh, Eric will be the um, facilitator for that and I will be uh, the facilitator for the library trustee um, interview. And I believe most of the library trustees will be at that meeting. It's a regular meeting night for them. And so they had already planned on that. So um, hopefully we'll, uh, following that process, we'll have uh, a recommendation and uh, we'll move forward from there. And uh, did you have anything to add? Um, no, no, nothing on yeah. that point. So that's all I have for this evening. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Can you provide any um, information about Christine Daugherty? Daugherty? Uh, she's from Colorado. Yeah. She's got a, a good, strong background in storm water. Okay. Um, it's been a while since I looked at her resume. I know she, her most recent position was working with um, gas pipelines, I believe. So. I, mm -hmm. I, Okay. So she's Bruce actually felt that was a good. Yeah. She's actually seen both That's sides from the yeah. regulatory side and as a, a business being regulated. Okay. So that was, that was kind of yeah. Interesting yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting her. Yes. <clears throat> if there's any more questions for Rick than other business, we have some catering permits and a special event permit. Uh, permit. So the first is a special event permit for uh, scheduled for September 14th, <clears throat> and the um, permittee will be the Burlington Beer Company. They're hosting a special event that will be um, involving uh, volunteers working to clean up uh, a section of the brook near where their business is located. So it seemed like a, yeah. a nice, interesting uh, special event for them. <laughs> Is there a motion? So, so moved. <laughs> Discussion of the motion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The next is a catering permit application. This is for an event scheduled for September 21st, and this is at the um, Eichen Barn, and the uh, caterer is 802 Cocktails, LLC. Staff has no objections. Staff has no objections. Right? Yeah, staff has no objections. Uh, uh, yeah. Is there a motion on this? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Next one is September 28th. Also a catering permit, also at the Eichen Barn, and the caterer is American Flatbread. Is there a motion? Uh, so moved. Seconded. Uh, discussion on the motion. Staff's good. Yes. Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And one more. The last one is a catering permit for October 5th, also at the Eichen Barn. Uh, and the caterer for this event is the Skinny Pancake. Hmm. Uh, so moved. Second. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. <laughs> Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, I think that takes care of one other. One more. Okay, uh, good. This is not a, a catering or a special event permit. Uh, this is um, relates to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns annual business oh. meeting, which is scheduled for Wednesday, October 2nd. And it'll be held in Killington, Vermont, at the Killington Grand Hotel. Uh, if one of the select board members is interested in coming, um, then we would like to add your name to this. If not, um, Deb Beckett will be there anyway, and uh, the board um, has the option of designating her or selecting her as the designate uh, designated delegate from Williston. Yeah. And you're comfortable with Deb representing Williston? Yes. yes then I'm good. So I think we probably need a motion to that effect. <clears throat> I'll move to select Deb Beckett to represent the town of 
of Williston at the VLCT Town Fair. Did I get the name of the event correct? It's the annual business meeting. Sorry, at the annual VLCT business meeting. Your second. Second. Sorry, discussion on the motion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Anything else on our other business that anybody has? Oh, yes, sorry, one quick thing. Um, I have before me the um, Catamount Community Forest Committee, which I was not part of the discussion to adopt this, so sh I probably shouldn't sign it. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Then I'm good. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks. Anything else? My apologies, other my apologies for being late. Um, uh, in my defense, uh, <laughs> I was uh, transporting my daughter from the JVA soccer game, and CBU won three to one over Colchester. All right. And the varsity won one nothing in overtime. Wow. Oh my goodness! Wow. Was it a shootout or was it? Uh... No, it was a sudden death. Oh. Um, yeah. Well, and, uh, it ended ended quickly enough so that my phone uh, rang with my daughter's voice saying, where are you? I'm in the parking lot. Um, so, uh, <laughs> wait, wait a second. I, 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 I need to understand something. <laughs> so your daughter was in the parking lot. Her game was over, but you were watching a different the, game. The JBA team <laughs> goes and supports the varsity girls in their overtime. Okay. Uh, when their game was over, so I thought that she was okay. She was there, and I was uh, actually I was grabbing a hot dog because I knew that I wasn't going to have time to eat before this meeting. So I was doing it for the uh, sacrificing yeah. for the town of Williston, actually, <laughs> so that my blood sugar levels would be high enough and I could provide the leadership <laughs> that I, I felt would be required. And See, that's your defense, Ted. It's my. Uh, oh, I didn't know about that. So great, we got all this on the record. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, laughs> <yeah. laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I will thank the board for uh, their attention to the last uh, meeting that I was absent for and Joy did a great job as vice chair, so thank you all. And if there's no other business, then we're adjourned.